Welcome to the MTC Report, the news behind the news with journalist Mark Taylor Canfield. We offer you independent voices and underreported stories about topics you won't hear anywhere else. Join us as we delve into the deeper issues behind the news stories of the day on the MTC Report. Hi, this is Mark Taylor Canfield in Seattle. I'm executive director for Democracy Watch News. I'm also a musician and writer and actor. Um, some people call me the rock and roll journalist. I wanted to give you a quick report in a local election that drew some national attention, including from former presidential candidate, Senator Bernie Sanders, who made some endorsements in these campaigns. He endorsed four candidates actually in the local Seattle elections. And we can talk about that in a minute. Self-described progressive candidates faced off with more conservative business interests. That's what I wrote over at Daily Coast. In a series of elections for local offices throughout the city of Seattle and Martin Luther King County. And all the ballots have been dropped off or mailed as of November 3rd. But the elections won't actually be officially certified until later this month. There are some close voting results for the election. Especially to the offices of Port Commissioner and to the Martin Luther King County Commission. Some of those races are still too close to call as of this report. This is Mark Taylor Canfield for the MTC report and with an update on the Seattle elections. These are also some excerpts from my article at Daily Coast where you can uh, check out the article that I wrote there called Trump Republican elected a Seattle city attorney. So in the campaign for mayor, uh, this year, many local news reports highlighted a, quote, stark difference between the two candidates. Lorena Gonzalez, whose family came to the U.S. as migrant farm workers, and Bruce Harrell, the child of an African-American father and a Japanese mother who was interred by the U.S. government during World War II with her family. Harrell is supported by corporate business interests, while Lorena Gonzalez, current president of the city council, says she represents working families and the poor. So Harold and some of his supporters may favor the continuation of the city's infamous sweeps of houseless encampments where people um, are camped in the city uh, where uh, these encampments are destroyed and the residents are evicted by force or arrested while Gonzalez is opposed to that policy. In a city, you know, some may think are controlled by billionaires and because there are so many living around here, including Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos and f formerly Paul Allen. But, um, as I always say, it's called the Emerald City. That's uh, the nickname of Seattle. And I just say, you know, pay no attention to the men behind the curtain because they're billionaires. So, Harold and some of his supporters can, you know, um, have a different view of the houseless encampments and uh, where people are living and see it as a public safety issue where the people who were supporting Lorena and Gonzalez uh, were seeing it more as a social and economic uh, issue uh, of economic and social injustice. Centrist and business back candidates at this point and three major city races were leading in the days following the election. Uh, former city council president Bruce Harrell, who was also interim mayor at one point, has received 65% of the vote. Uh, heated exchanges between Harrell and Gonzalez highlighted the differences in their campaigns. Gonzalez accused Harrell of being backed by the same elite business interests who are opposed to the local progressive agenda, including an increase in the corporate tax in Seattle. Washington State currently has no state income tax whatsoever. So billionaires like Microsoft co-founders Bill Gates and Paul Allen and Amazon mogul Jeff Bezos have always considered the state to be a major, major tax haven. According to most tax experts that I know of, the state has earned the title pretty much of, quote, most regressive tax system in the USA, unquote. As an example, um, just one example, the sales tax in Seattle is now 10%. Check that out. In another controversial race, Republican Ann Davison has been leading with 58% of the vote in the election for a city attorney against Nicole Thomas Kennedy. And Davison is a former Democrat who switched to the Republican Party during the last year of the Trump administration, while Nicole Thomas Kennedy, also known as NTK, is a member of a group uh, of people who were 
very outspoken against police activity during the protests during the Black Lives Matter marches last year after the death of George Floyd. Nicole Thomas Kennedy is a public defender who's been accused by her opponents of being an extremist leftist radical. And by the way, folks, the red baiting rhetoric in this election and against uh, Democratic Socialist Shama Sawant, which has been going on for quite a while, has been a major concern for some political observers here who see it as a throwback to the bad old days of Senator Joe McCarthy and his scurrilous attacks on public officials. So, for the record, Shama Sawant has been very successful in passing legislation to extend the moratorium on rental evictions, to provide relocation assistance, to increase taxes on large corporations uh, in order to fund affordable housing projects, and she's currently pushing a, what she calls a Seattle Green Deal, Green New Deal. Uh, she's also been subjected to an attempt to launch a recall campaign against her by business interests who are opposed to her socialist political philosophy. She's a member of the Socialist Alternative Party. Senator Bernie Sanders endorsed Lorena Gonzalez in the campaign for mayor and Teresa Mosqueda for the city council race. Mosqueda has uh, been leading in the vote count, so it looks like she'll probably be reelected. Sanders also endorsed two candidates for the Seattle Port Commission, Hamdi Mohammed and Toshiko Grace Hasegawa. Both candidates are neck and neck with their opponents at the time of this report. The reader might question why a U.S. Senator representing Vermont would go out of his way to endorse candidates for local office in the Seattle metropolitan area in Martin Luther King County, but you should consider that millions of dollars of trade move through the Port of Seattle every year, much of it involving trade with nations in Asia, especially, of course, China. The environmental impact of these global trade agreements is enormous. Uh, the labor relations uh, issue is also massive on, uh, on, on a massive scale here on the west coast at the ports. I just read an article in Medium by a Teamster who was talking about how the uh, delay in the shipping uh, chain has been created largely by understaffing at the ports, and that's done intentionally by corporations and companies that control the industry and uh, see it as a gain for them because then they can charge more for shipping because of the delays, which is ridiculous. Anyway, add to this the fact that Seattle served as a bellwether on many issues that later went national, such as the $15 an hour minimum wage, which actually started in SeaTac, Washington, but then moved to Seattle next. Legalization of cannabis, marriage equality, etc. We're all aware of Bernie Sanders' support for Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, my congresswoman, and also City Council member Shama Sawant. Uh, and his political ties to the Northwest are very strong and deep rooted for some of those reasons. Another City Council race, Sarah Nelson versus Nikita Oliver, also exhibited the polarity of personal and political styles that we've seen uh, this year during these local elections. Oliver has been described as a poet, an educator, a lawyer, civil rights activist, a strong supporter of the Black Lives Matter movement. And once again, Sarah Nelson, her opponent, represents a much more status quo kind of candidacy, which might or might not sit well with her very determined and focused progressive colleagues on this current city council. At the time of this writing, Sarah Nelson was leading Oliver with 60% of the majority of the votes counted so far. And as usual, the city will be divided between a progressive majority of mostly female members of, on the city council, squaring off with a much more business-oriented status quo type of mayor, Bruce Harrell. And also, Martin Luther King County Executive Dow Constantine is running against State Senator Joan Wang for a bid for Constantine's fourth term as head of the county government. And the incumbent is currently ahead of 57% of the vote. So, here's the real story behind the election, folks. And it has to do with democracy. And as Executive Director for Democracy Watch News, I have to focus on this issue. According to election officials, only 50% of eligible voters in Seattle even participated in the election while 43% of Martin Luther King County voters cast ballots this year, which is typical for off-year elections when a presidential candidate is not running for office, but we need to do better um, at getting people out to vote and making it an important and valued and respected part of our civic duties. By the way, a few days after the election, an alert was set out from a group called the Shama Solidarity Campaign, which backs City Council member Shama Sawant, warning about PAC money coming into the area. Corporate PACs, according to them, have already spent over $1.2 million 
um, and much more is still waiting in the bank. Among the top pack donors are luxury real estate companies like Vulcan, which build many of Amazon's campuses locally. And according to the Shama Solidarity campaign, uh, Vulcan has spent $75,000 in PAC money on the November 2nd election. Uh, in 2019, they dropped uh, big business in general, dropped $4 million into local races, including a $1.4 million uh, largesse from Amazon alone. And according to the Shama Solidarity campaign they expect uh, after the November general elections are over that big business uh, will pour more money into the area with their packs again uh, creating endless mailers uh, to uh, demand a recall of Shama Sawant they'll be able to hire hundreds of paid canvassers and buy extensive TV and digital ads um, so that's what the Shama Solidarity campaign is saying these are my words this is my commentary if the recent elections in the Seattle region are any indication of future trends, then we can expect big money to play hardball, as usual, bank-willing candidates who are pledged to do their bidding. And unless the corporate campaign financing system is reformed, the corrupt corporate campaign financing system, then longtime bastions of progressive politics like Seattle will be reshaped to represent commercial interests instead of the public good. This is Mark Taylor Canfield reporting from Seattle. I'm executive director for the nonprofit news organization Democracy Watch News. You can check out our podcast at democracycast.libsyn.com uh, or other major uh, podcast pro provider platforms. You can also go to democracywatchnews.org. I'm also a weekly guest on the Jeff Santo Show at revolutionradionetwork.com where all of those shows are live and also archived. And I also uh, appear with reports on the Tom Hartman program. This is Mark Taylor Campbell from Seattle. Thanks for listening and watching, and peace out. The MTC Report, the news behind the news with journalist Mark Taylor Canfield. We offer you independent voices and underreported stories about topics you won't hear anywhere else. Join us as we delve into the deeper issues behind the news stories of the day on the MTC Report.